This is Kimberly Kessler. On July 4th, 2004, 35-year-old Kimberly Kessler disappeared from her hometown in Butler County, Pennsylvania. Though her disappearance was abrupt and suspicious, Kimberly's relatives believed that she had likely left at her own free will and held on to that hope for her return. Eight years later, sometime in 2012, Kimberly's family reported her missing. The local authorities did a short-term investigation, which seemed to confirm that Kimberly left by choice and did not want to be found. They came to this conclusion after speaking with a neighbor that received a call from Kimberly from a Florida jail looking for help sometime between 2004 and 2012. As it turned out, the police were correct. Kimberly had actually been traveling around the United States with no intent on being located. She had traveled to approximately 15 other states and lived in about 33 different cities and adopted 17 different aliases along the way. She used names like Pam Cleaver, Jen Allen, Krista Brooks, Melissa Losey, and Maya Stone. She eventually settled on the alias Jennifer Seibert. However, before we can continue talking about Kimberly Kessler, let's now dive into another missing persons case. This is Jolene Cummings. Jolene was last seen on May 12, 2018, at around 5 p.m., leaving her place of employment, the Tangles Hair Salon in Fernandina Beach, Florida. On May 13, 2018, which is Jolene's birthday as well as Mother's Day, Jolene did not show up to pick up her children from her ex-husband. At this point, Jolene's mother was contacted and she immediately became concerned. On May 14, 2018, Jolene's mother reported Jolene missing to the local law enforcement. Law enforcement quickly began their search and arrived at the Tangles Hair Salon at about 10 a.m. on May 15th. Upon their arrival, they spoke to some of the employees who were on shift. As they approached the manager, he was already on the phone speaking to another employee. The employee that he was speaking to was working alongside Jolene on May 12th, the last day Jolene was seen. The police asked the manager to tell the employee that they would like to speak with her. This employee's name was Jennifer Seibert, or a.k.a. Kimberly Kessler. Camera footage from May 15th indicates that Jennifer, a.k.a. Kimberly, was parking her black Kia Soul outside of the Tangles Hair Salon, as the manager of the salon advised her that the police wanted to talk to her. Kimberly then drives off and texts the manager that she was leaving town. Kimberly, still posing as Jennifer Seibert, then contacts the police station directly and informs them that she did not want to take part in the investigation. She stated that this was because she felt threatened by a stalker ex-boyfriend with immense computer skills. She also stated that if her name was input into the system at any time, this ex-boyfriend had the ability to access this information and locate her. The following day, on May 16th, 2018, Jolene's vehicle, a beige Ford Expedition, was discovered abandoned in a Home Depot parking lot, not far from the Tangles Hair Salon. This discovery encouraged police to check the local surveillance videos of the Home Depot parking lot. They then viewed Jolene's vehicle being parked just after 1 a.m. The vehicle stayed parked for a short while before a figure wearing all black left the vehicle and abandoned it there. The police gained the suspicion that the person operating Jolene's vehicle was Jennifer Seibert. Sometime that same day, May 16th, 2018, Kimberly Kessler was located in her black Kia Soul. She was parked between two semi-trucks at a rest station in St. John's County. It was apparent that Kimberly had been living in her vehicle and moving from location to location. Upon arrest, Police noticed that Kimberly had band-aids on her face and on her hands. The police asked her to remove the band-aids. When she did, scratch marks and bruises were revealed. These marks were consistent with injuries that an assailant would receive during some kind of attack. Kimberly was then booked into the St. John's County Jail on an out-of-county warrant on May 17th. When the police asked her where she received these marks, she claimed that she received them when she was riding her bike and accidentally rode into a tree branch. She also stated that she received some of them from bedbugs. The police questioned, You can receive bruises from bedbugs? Jennifer, aka Kimberly, then replied, On me they do. I don't know. Whatever. While questioning Kimberly, they also took fingerprints. During this process, they had to cut Kimberly's nails. While cutting her nails, Kimberly was flinching. It was during this encounter that law enforcement were able to discover that Jennifer Seibert was in fact Kimberly Kessler. They made this discovery when Kimberly tried to provide them with Jennifer's social security number, which was linked to a female who passed away in Kimberly's hometown. They also confirmed that she was, in fact, Kimberly Kessler via fingerprinting. The next day, on May 18th, she was released from St. John's County Jail to be moved to a jail in Nassau County. 
On Saturday, May 19th, Kimberly Kessler was booked into the Nassau County Jail on a charge of Grand Theft Auto and held on a $500,000 bond. Meanwhile, Nassau County Sheriff's Office tells the public it is asking for anyone who had an appointment or stopped at Tangles Hair Salon on Saturday, May 12th to contact Detective Beasley. A tip comes in that leads Nassau County Sheriff's Office volunteers to search for Cummings on horseback in a wooded area in Hilliard. The search returns no findings. The next day, on May 20th, 2018, Jolene's mother posts an emotional plea on Facebook. Today is the seventh day that we are without my daughter. Today is seven days her children are without their mother. Today is seven days that her brother and sister are without their sister. Today is seven days that her close friends are without their friend. Let's bring Jolene home. Within weeks of Kimberly's stay at Nassau County Jail, Kimberly pleaded for officers to move her to another prison. When they refused, Kimberly won on a hunger strike. After about a week of not eating, law enforcement approved her request and moved her to another jail. Though Kimberly was able to receive the initial move she requested, she later returned to her hunger strike when pleading with law enforcement to move her to a psychiatric treatment facility. She remained on her second hunger strike for approximately 56 days. During her initial interrogation, she spoke of the many jobs that she had while she was traveling, from being a waitress to being a stripper. She also spoke about her family and a son that she hadn't spoke to in years. Eventually, some of the footage from Kimberly's interrogation was released. Let's take a look at some of that interrogation. What name do you want me to, to call you? Because I was talking to the detective that drove you up and he said I might have been calling you by the wrong name. It's funny that St. John's didn't tell you. When you run, run my fingerprints through, they come mm -hmm. up as Kimberly Lee Kessler. That's about it. So I would prefer to be called Kim. Okay, but okay I just want to make sure I, that I'm calling you. Uh, by your right but if you run them through, I mean, the last time I got picked up was back in 1999, and I bonded out, and it took them, I don't remember, it was a couple of weeks, I don't know if it was two and a half weeks or three and a half weeks before they actually, you know, matched them matched up. Them up. Yeah, yeah, it didn't like, but that was 1999, so maybe it was a little bit slower then, okay. but I don't know, there's like lots of people on the face of the planet, so maybe it still takes time, I'm not sure. And, and it may be too that you, since you've had this agonist for, for so long, you know, it probably you, you've probably done a lot of stuff since that time, and so you've actually kind of got a, you know, you've got a history under that name, so it probably shows up in different databases and stuff like that. And mm -hmm. that's just a guess, and maybe, maybe that's why it's, it's happening like that. Oh, no, fingerprints are fingerprints. Fingerprints are fingerprints, and I agree. <laughs> like, but, but, but I, have, I, uh, I didn't erase them with acid, so <laughs> they are the same. And, and, Just saying. And, and I agree with you, but I haven't, I haven't run your fingerprints. And if St. John's did, they, they failed to, to notify us that, you know, uh, of the different names. So I apologize perhaps, for that. Perhaps they just thought I was a, you know, a nut job, so they just right. ignored me. But it, it will eventually come up, so. We'll just call you Kim. Okay, yeah, thanks. If you're good with, with Kim, can you just go through when you work with her on that Saturday? So I can, is there anything you can tell me that... Did she ever talk to you about a, a boyfriend? Uh, I, know she, I know she's got a husband. I know she had a boyfriend. Did she ever talk about anybody she was scared of? She, did she ever say anything that would that she wanted to run away and get away from it all? I mean, you know. I don't remember hearing anything. She would have different conversations sometimes with different clients. She I, was saying CPS came to her house. She was telling one client that I caught a little blip of it in between listening to YouTube and the phone ringing, and and she I remember hearing her say she thought her her ex-husband or her husband was doing to get out of paying child support. That's all I heard, and I don't remember ever hearing about a boyfriend ever, but then again, I don't always really pay attention. Did I tell you who she was hanging around with, or was no. she into anything that maybe she shouldn't have been She into, would just or... say to me, like, you know, the time or two that she'd say, I'm just going home and having a quiet night at home, or like, I don't have the kids tonight, or, you know, whatever, I'm just going to enjoy this. And I'd be like, you're young, why don't you go out? She's like, no, I don't need a man in my life. But here she had a boyfriend, I didn't even know that. So. Was she involved in any bad habits or anything that could get her in trouble? Um, I, I can't say that it that she did, but I did find a bag that I believe had crystal meth in it, just a little bit in the bottom, a tiny baggie back by the back door. Did you guys ever <laughs> hang out after work? Did you ever go anywhere no. together? Okay. Um, did she ever allow to use your car? Are you allowed to use her car? Did you ever go anywhere together like that? No. Okay, okay. But you asked me all that before I answered before. So. Uh, okay. I was, That's not, all right. There's video of you dropping her car off at the Home Depot parking lot 
there in Yulee and walking across and going into the uh, gate station and getting a taxi cab back down to, uh, they had it listed as Dick Swain's, but it was back down there to where Tangles is, okay? And that's why you're, you, you know, you're charged with a grand theft auto. And I'm not trying to trick you, I'm not trying to fool you. You're opening up to me and I'm opening up to you, okay? Mm -hmm. That's the reason you're charged with that. You're not charged with anything else, okay? Um, but something happened to Jolene. And, you know, we actually sent our, sent our crime scene unit out to process um, tangles. And there was some evidence there, okay? We have also, and, and I don't want you to think I've been fooling you. I, you know, I just want to talk to you and get to know you a little bit because I think something... What's your name? Was some, some, something something that, that you didn't plan happened, but let me tell you what, what we did, okay? Because I just want to be honest with you because I think something bad happened that you didn't intend to happen, but... Um, we have, you know, taking a look at your car on reaction, and we, we went out and um, uh, went to your storage unit on the island, and we did that all on a legal basis. We had the search warrants going on, okay. Um, we've got the, the video of you at the, when you go in and buy a bottle of water, you bought it on your credit card. Uh, you paid for the, uh, for the cab on your credit card. Uh, you used the clerk's phone to make the phone call to the, car, to the cab company. Um, we also have recovered your shoes that has Jolene's blood on your shoes. So I just want you to, if something happened that you didn't intend to happen, I want to talk to you about it. I don't think you're an evil person. I don't think you're a mean person. I think you have done one hell of a job getting through the last 25 years. Um, so let shoes. me reply this way, and you may not like the answer. I would like legal counsel. While the police continued their investigation over the next several months, they uncovered a reasonable quantity of evidence, all pointing at Kimberly's involvement. Let's now go over all of that evidence. From the Tangle Salon to Kimberly Kessler's car and her storage unit, investigators say Kessler left a literal trail of blood from Jolene Cummings in all three places. Cummings' blood was found inside Kessler's storage unit, including Cummings' blood on both Kessler's sock and boot. More of Cummings' blood was found on a pair of scissors inside Kessler's car. Records show detectives located Cummings' fingernail in a blue bin inside Kessler's storage unit. Kessler's blood was also found inside the Tangle Salon. Surveillance video shows Kessler carrying two white trash bags to the dumpster behind Dick's wings after Tangle's closed that night. Cummings was last seen alive. Detectives noted in the documents that the trash bags appeared to be heavy because Kessler struggled to lift them into the dumpster. Due to the surveillance footage of the Home Depot parking lot that showed Jolene's vehicle parked and abandoned at 1.17 a.m. on May 13th, the police went to several gas stations and convenience stores in the area and also reviewed their surveillance footage as well. This turned up a video of the same person wearing all black entering a gas station and purchasing a bottle of water. This person used their credit card to pay for the water. When the police requested the transaction information from this purchase, the name on the credit card was Jennifer Seibert, a.k.a. Kimberly Kessler. When they got around to searching Kimberly's storage locker, inside they found three cell phones, four wigs, and two cut ponytails. The police went on to review Kimberly's search history. They found that around the time of the disappearance, Kimberly had searched Jolene Cummings about 400 times. She also searched Jolene Cummings, no body, no crime. She also searched on the image platform Pinterest, how to preserve a human body, how to dissect a human body, and also plastination. Plastination is defined as an innovative method of conserving anatomical specimens where all the bloody fluids are exchanged with a polymer, which can be hardened. Plastination was invented by Dr. Gunther von Hagens in 1977, and he and his team have further developed the process since then. The police also found surveillance footage of Kimberly Kessler purchasing a large carving knife, zip ties, and garbage bags at a self-checkout. Law enforcement also found surveillance footage that took place shortly after the video of Kimberly making the purchases which show Kimberly tossing heavy garbage bags into a dumpster. Investigators believe that Kimberly dismembered Jolene with the carving knife and then disposed of her body in these garbage bags. On July 2nd, 2019, 
Kimberly Kessler attended a competency hearing, and Judge James Daniel ruled that Kimberly Kessler was not competent to stand trial. She then spent some time in a psychiatric treatment facility where the staff believed that she was in fact competent to stand trial. A little less than a year later, Kimberly attended another competency hearing, and the same judge changed his ruling to state that he believed that she was now competent. As of December 9th, 2021, Kimberly Kessler was found guilty of the first-degree murder of Jolene Cummings. She was also found guilty of grand theft auto of Jolene Cummings' vehicle. During her trial, it was made apparent that Kimberly Kessler had been running from the FBI for 25 years, traveling through about 33 cities and using about 17 different aliases. She was wanted in several states. During her trial, she was given multiple opportunities to testify. However, she was removed due to routine outbursts. Kimberly now faces a mandatory life sentence. In a courtroom full of happy tears and hugs, Jolene Cummings' mother says she could feel her daughter's presence the moment a verdict came down. Therefore, versus Kimberly Kessler, a.k.a. Jennifer Marie Stiver, verdict count one, first degree murder. We, the jury, found the defendant guilty of first degree murder as charged in the indictment. We know that she's washing down on you right now. What would you want her to know? Justice has been served. Everything that came through me was through Jolene. Jolene was here. Johnson reported Cummings missing after she never showed up to pick up her children on Mother's Day in 2018. Kessler, her former co-worker at the Tangles Hair Salon, was the last person to see Cummings alive. State prosecutors say evidence showed Kessler used scissors to kill Cummings before disposing her body. A trail of Cummings' blood found cleaned up in the hair salon pointed detectives to Kessler, a woman with 17 different aliases. I don't for one second believe that Kimberly Kessler or whatever name she's going by today, I don't believe this is her first murder. I don't at all. Johnson has only one request from her daughter's killer. If you could find it within your heart to tell us where the remains of my daughter, where are the remains of my daughter? Give us some closure. I'm asking you from one mother to another. Johnson says her daughter was a loving mother of three whose spirit will live on forever.